Last week, we talked about songwriting in the third person, which is the least intimate point of view that you can songwrite from. Now, this week, we're going to get one step more intimate which is actually not second person. It's actually first person songwriting. So we're going to talk about the advantages of first person songwriting, why you might want to choose that. We're about to do that right now. Hello, friend. Welcome to another episode of Songwriter Theory. Before we dive in, we're talking lyrics today. So if you haven't before, or if you're new here, be sure to pick up my free guide on six steps to writing lyrics, my six step lyric writing checklist. Link will be in the description below. It's totally free. It will guide you all the way from the very first step of coming up with a lyric, which is the idea, right? The basic ideas that eventually are like the seeds that become the songs, right? Like, how do you first gather those seeds? It starts with that step, and it goes all the way through the different steps of editing, the different steps of preparation before you really start the writing phase. So there's six steps here, okay? It's not just writing lyrics. A lot of people just start writing, and they're like, oh, look, here's a lyric, right? No, no, no. There's six steps if you want to be able to get all the way from a song idea to a song that you are very confident in. You can be proud of the lyrics. You can put the lyrics on your wall and it's like poetry. It's great without even needing the music. If that's what you want, go pick that up free below. Today, though, we are talking about first person songwriting. So basically what first person is, is... It's like third person narration where you're talking about a story. The only difference here is with a third person narrator, you are outside of the story talking about the story, right? So I believe how I described it last week is it's like you talking to your friend about, hey, in The Mandalorian or whatever TV show you're watching, right? Here's what happened, right? You're not in that story. The character of Joseph Vidala is kind of unfortunately not in The Mandalorian, right? I can tell my friend, hey, this cool thing happened in The Mandalorian last week, but that story is outside of myself. I am not a character in that story. That's third person. First person, though, is actually where you are a character in the story, right? So this is like you telling your spouse a story of when you were younger about, you know, your childhood best friend, something that happened with them. Right. Like you are involved in that story, but the person you're talking to was not involved in that story. So you're telling a story that you are involved in. Third person is telling the story that you're not involved in, which is why in theory it's more objective. Right. But in this case, it's getting a little more personal. Right. You're bearing your heart. Maybe, probably, in the sense that you're telling somebody a story that you're actually involved in, which is obviously more personal or more intimate, as I worded it before than it is to tell a story about two other people. And, you know, it's a common thing for third-person songwriting, for people to write in the third person and use he if they're a he and she if they're a she, but really they're talking about themselves. Sometimes people do that for sure. But if you really want to to make it a little more intimate, first-person might be the way for you to go. So one reason to use first-person is if you don't want to involve the listener in the song in the sense that you don't want the listener to be really a character in the song, you don't want to put any burden on the listener, you don't want to assume anything about the listener, when you're playing the song on stage, you don't want to be necessarily thrusting the listener into one of the characters in your story, right? You just want to be able to tell them the story like all the listeners are your friends, but you're not saying you are the person who did that, right? Because say for direct address where I'm, where, which we, we haven't covered direct address yet. We will two weeks, but in direct address, if I'm writing a song in direct address, it's like what I'm doing to you right now, right? Like I am talking to you. Right. So if I say you broke up with me and I'm angry about it, right, I'm, I'm talking to you and you're thinking to yourself, I didn't break up with you. What are you talking about? You're married. What, what does this, any of this even mean? Right. So a ton of confusion. But that's sort of what like direct address songwriting is. Right. Is is when you say, you know, you left me. It's 
and you're singing it to the audience, the you is in theory the audience, right? So that can be a disadvantage of the incredibly intimate direct address. So if you want to be able to get more intimate, but not have that you where the part where the people you're singing to, the people who are listening to your songs are sort of put in the shoes of somebody in the care in a character in the story, right? The you of the story, then first person is the way to go because it's the most intimate you can get without actually having a you in the story. Another reason, if you have multiple characters in your song, let's say you have a song, third person, where there are two characters, right? You have a father and a daughter. The first question you need to ask yourself is, do we need both those characters, right? So an advantage that you, that maybe you should lean more towards third person is if one of the characters is there in first person just to have somebody in the story, right? So for example, if I'm telling the story about my mother or my father, the question is, am I an important character? And if I am, let's say I'm an important character, right? Because in theory, I can tell a story about my dad that has nothing to do with him being my dad. Or I can tell a story about my mom without her being my mom, right? If it just happens to be a story about my mom's childhood before I even existed, right? Then it's irrelevant to you that I am a character in the story and that it's my mom I'm talking about, right? You, you don't care. It's just the story of a woman. It doesn't matter who that woman is in relation to me. That's irrelevant to the song. So in cases like that, why add an extra character when you don't need to? Instead, do third person, say she, right? So for my mom, she... And I don't need to be in the story, right? So that's where I would go third person. But sometimes, though, if it's a story of my, my relationship with my mother or my relationship with my wife or something like that, now I'm an important part of the story, right? I am a character in the story or need to be a character in the story for it to be told effectively. So in that case, why not make it more intimate? Choose first person instead of saying he, she, right? Like for, for me, he, and for my wife, she. Why do that if I can say I and she? Because A, it makes it more intimate, which generally speaking, if you can make it more intimate, that is often going to be the right call because songs usually are pulling at feelings, right? And it's easier to pull at feelings when it's more intimate, which is not to say that third person isn't the best choice in many cases, right? It's just usually you're not needing something to be more intimate in that case. And I talked about that last week. So if you want more on third person, go back to that. But when you're embodying an important character in the story, you're effectively reducing the load of information that you need to give. So, for example, if you're going to tell a love story and for whatever reason you think it's important to describe the two people, right, maybe their appearance matters. For instance, take Beauty and the, Be Beauty and the Beast. That would be an example of a story where the description, who they are, what they look like, matters quite a bit, right? Because in that case, the whole thing of the story right, is that there's this beautiful woman who is willing to fall in love with this beast. So it's about not being shallow, right? So it's it's very relevant in that case, that beast ugly, beauty is beautiful, right? Like the, the beauty is beautiful, shocker, I know. So in that case, it's highly relevant what they look like. So in, in anything where appearance might matter, or the gender of the singer might matter, right? Because depending on who they're talking to, right? The nature of a son's relationship to his dad versus a daughter's to her dad might make a difference in the subject of your song, right? If you're talking about your, your male boss who has been a jerk to you or your female boss who's been a jerk to you, what gender you are might make a difference in that, right? It might change the tone a little bit. If you have a he and she, it can start to get complicated, which you have in third person, right? Because there's two characters in the song. But if you can embody one of those characters, now it's just you singing. You don't need to describe yourself because everybody sees what you are and hears what you are, right? Like when I sing a song, people know, oh, it's a guy. And if they see me singing a song, they're like, oh, look at him. Brown hair, blue eyes, 5'7". That's the person singing the song, right? If 
Maybe height's relevant to the song. I don't know. The point is they have a character. They see a character. It's you. You're the one talking, right? So you don't need to describe yourself. You don't need to say like, oh, I have long hair. Or, oh, I have like, you don't need to say those things, right? But if you're talking about a love story about two other people, when you're describing beauty and beast, you need to describe both of them, right? But if you are a beast and you're talking about beauty, then, you know, you're fine. Just go up on stage and sing. And now you have to tell less information that that might just get in the way. So something to think about, it can, it can actually reduce the amount of information that you need to give. Another reason, it allows you to play with imperfect perceptions. I haven't referenced The Office in a while, I think. And that's about to change. We're about to talk about The Office again. So a great example of this, or what I think is a great example of this uh, that I thought of is... If you've and you don't have to have seen The Office to understand, but if you've seen The Office or Parks and Rec or just have ever seen a clip from from them ever, you understand that they have a lot of talking heads, right? It's this idea that like the person is being interviewed and is talking to the camera about events that are happening, right? So it's a sort it's a sort of way to get into people's heads using a documentary, right? So when Michael Scott is talking to the camera, oftentimes a part of the humor is actually that you saw a more objective view from the camera of how a scene played out. You saw the look that Jan made or whatever that tells you, like, Jan doesn't even really like Michael or whatever. But then Michael gives you his perception, and a part of the humor sometimes is how wrong he is about things, and he's totally perceiving something completely the wrong way, right? So he is an imperfect narrator, Because we all are imperfect narrators, right? I don't have objective truth on my experiences, right? The way I perceive somebody in my life, somebody I have a relationship with, what what they meant, right? Like, depending on how my wife spoke today, my perception of what she meant, like, was she just tired? Was she very happy? Was she pleased because I vacuumed and helped out? Was, like... I can, in my brain, come up with reasons that she, you know, talks to me the way she did, and I can assume how happy she is with me versus, like, oh, man, this Joseph guy. I don't know. I don't know what else to say off of that, this Joseph guy. I don't know. I mean, you hear me talk, right? She has a lot to deal with. Give her a break, right? Can you imagine dealing with this all the time? I mean, it's probably fun for you once a week for half an hour, but I mean, I have en- endless, endless musings that I just gift out to people. Can't always be fun. So anyway, we are imperfect narrators of our own life, right? We're, we're imperfect perceptors of things going on. So with first person, something that you can actually play with is it's, you can really work with the idea that how you're telling this story of, of, you know, your friend when you grew up or whatever, that's not necessarily reliable, right? And you can actually use that in order to create some dissonance of like, wait a second, some parts of this story don't fit with other things to lead people to sort of have this feeling of like, hmm, not sure what the truth is, right? So there's a lot of fun things you can play with. Again, just think of The Office if you've seen it or Parks and Rec. Um, look up some some Michael Scott clips if you don't know what I'm talking about to hopefully give you uh, a firmer idea of what I'm talking about. But to go to first person versus third person in general, because we talked about third person last week, feel free to check that video out or podcast if you're listening via podcast. Um, third person is going to be less intimate. But it's going to be more objective, right? So it 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 has it feels less loaded, right? Because you're not a character in the story, so it sort of gives the air of like, look, I'm just telling the story about other people. I have no skin in this game, right? Like, so I have no reason but to just tell you the truth and to be unbiased and to just tell you a story and you take from it what you will. Granted, that doesn't mean you're actually not biased, but... In theory, that makes a more reliable narrator. 
But it comes somewhat at the cost of intimacy because there is no I and there is no you in that song. It's all a narrator outside of a story talking about characters inside a story. The advantage of first person is you get to keep a lot of the positives of that third person, but you get to make it a little more intimate because now you are telling the listener a story that is personal to you. It's not you talking about some new story that happened across the globe, right? It's 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 what happened to you last week. It's what happened when you got in the car yesterday, right? It's more personal now. Now, that being said, it also can make characters a little bit overwhelming because if you have too many characters that are not you in the story or like I mentioned before, if you have a situation where you're using first person, where really there is no gain to first person, right? Where you are an irrelevant participator in the story, right? So like this is like having a character in a movie who's just there and then narrates to the camera what's happening and then the camera pans back to the action, but they never actually interact with the rest of the characters in the movie. Like, that would be pointless, right? Like, why is this character even here? Just let the objective camera show me the story. Don't have this narrator who's inexplicably in the story talking about it, right? It's like it's like if Sam never actually... I know, right? I'm not I'm not talking about Star Wars. I went, I went Lord of the Rings. I don't even like Lord of the Rings that much. I know, it's blasphemous. I mean, I like it. It's very good. But I'm just not a huge, like, Middle, Middle Earth type fan like when there's castles and dragons and stuff that usually loses me dragons still very cool but there's something about wizards and stuff that just doesn't do it for me anyway but if sam was constantly like talking to the camera like hey here's the story of frodo and never actually interacted with frodo that'd be silly right that'd be stupid like why is sam even there the point of sam is to interact with frodo that's sort of what a first person song would be if you that character you're embodying in that first person doesn't actually add anything to the story, right? So don't do that. Don't force it into first person. Next week and the week after, we have two more point of views to cover. We have second person, which is probably the most rarely used. And then we also have direct address, which is maybe the most common. If not, it is certainly one of them. It's definitely probably my favorite point of view. I use it a lot. So we were going to talk about those two. Again, we're going to get progressively more into the more intimate ones. And but they all have trade offs. They all, you know, none of them are perfect. I would say they all have certain things that they're very strong at that make them the ideal fit. But they also all have drawbacks that make them imperfect. Right. There's a reason that not everybody does the same point of view for every song. Right. Because they all have different advantages. So be sure if you enjoyed this, be sure to drop a like if you enjoyed this as well subscribe, click that little notification bell. If you're on YouTube, if you're listening via podcast, please leave a review on iTunes. That is the number one thing you can do to help me out. If you appreciate and enjoy this content, if you get value from this content, that is the best way that you can help me. I appreciate you for doing that. And again, we're talking about lyrics here, right? Point of view is a lyrical thing. Be sure to grab the six step, six step lyric checklist, totally free in Link is in the description down below if you're on YouTube. I believe it's in the description as well. If you are listening via podcast, I appreciate you. I hope you go pick up that guide because it's definitely my favorite of the three, three free guides I do have. And I will talk to you next week.